Hey, you're checking out the 2023 Lancaster Archery Classic from the Spooky Nook Sports Complex here in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. It's time for shoot up finals in the Masters Open 50 plus category. And hi, everyone. Welcome to the broadcast booth. I'm Greg White sitting alongside Chris Schaff, who just won Neem Indoor Archery Champion 2023 in France. Welcome back to the States and welcome to Mannheim, Pennsylvania. And thanks for being in the broadcast booth. How's the weekend been so far here from Pennsylvania? The weekend's been awesome. I mean, this is one of the greatest RAN tournaments, you know, that I've personally gone to. No hiccups, no nothing this weekend. So it's been an awesome, awesome shoot. And Chris, we're going to see him tomorrow in the finals for the Open Pro category. But we're lucky enough to have him right now for this match. And uh, hey, if you're new to what happens here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania area and this classic shoot, let's take a look at the schedule and what we have on tap. We've just got through our Senior Open, Women's Open now. We've got Masters Open category. Chris will be here for this one and the Women's Masters Open. And then we're going to transition to our youth categories for a couple of those. And then we're going to finish off the day with our women's bare bow and then the bare bow final class. This is how the shoot up rules are. Top four qualified. They're ranked. Our rank ties are broken by 11s. We'll tell you more about that. And it's a bottom up format. So in this one, our fourth place qualifier after elimination rounds this morning, we'll shoot off against our number three qualifier. The winner of that will go to two. And then the winner of that round will go to the number one qualifier. In this final, we have the ability to call a 12 ring, a one and a half centimeter white dot. So you can score a maximum points of 136 after four ends of competition. But in order to shoot that 12 ring and get credit for it, you have to call it and you're allowed one per end. A lot of information coming at you, but it'll all make sense to you as we roll on through this match. And now the third member of our broadcast team is PJ Riley, and he's going to welcome the archers to the field of play. All right, Masters Open, we're gonna kick off here. Our fourth seed from Hummelstown, Pennsylvania, Todd McCormick. <laughs> Todd shot our top score in qualification for this division. And our number three seed from Harrisonburg, Virginia, Kirby Gillespie. <laughs> Kirby is our defending champ in this division. He's up on that banner in the lower right corner. And Kirby Gillespie had uh, quite a 2022, Chris, didn't he? Yeah, it looks like, you know, he's won Lancaster. He won the Indoor Nationals and the Outdoor Nationals. <laughs> All in the same year, so he should be feeling pretty good coming into this. He definitely should. And, of course, for Todd McCormick, he's been a national champion in finger classes. Now, there's something that we haven't talked about. We often talk about releases, so when we talk about finger classes, what are we talking about? Um, yeah, as you see these guys, when they get up here, you'll have a D-loop on your string, which is a little rope that's tied where you knock your arrow in between, and then he's going to hook his release to that D-loop. Fingers class. You're using your fingers on that string, so you have a lot more variables. Yeah, that's uh, the release aids have only been around for a short period of time, considering how long archery's been around. Archers are shooting 20 yards downrange at a 40 centimeter target face. Nine, ten, one. The innermost ring that you see there is actually valued at 11 points, and then as we go out with the rings, it goes 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Each archer will have 30 seconds to shoot an arrow, so as soon as your opponent's arrow hits the bale, your 30 seconds will start. They're also on a raised platform that has a button yes, on that platform that they can step on or activate with their stabilizer to indicate that they want to shoot a 12. Go for the 12, which is that tiny little dot that you'll see on the target face right down towards the bottom. And in the prior classes, we've seen some people hit that button and they were you know, unsuccessful at hitting it. So maybe this class here, we'll see our first 12 in the weekend. Yeah. Nice shot. One of the things that we see in indoor is more of a variety of equipment being shot. Here we see these two archers shooting aluminum arrows. So far today, we've seen a lot of carbon arrows. 
Ten. Generally outdoor, I don't think I've seen an aluminum arrow in quite a while. No, they don't, they don't really make aluminum arrows that are super small diameter that will work off of these newer compound bows. They make a core, aluminum core arrow, but it's still wrapped in carbon. Perfect 33 for Gillespie. You can see Kirby up there. It looks like there is no nerves going on. You know, he's got a super solid shot. It looks like he's aiming well. And that could be from him getting in this position and winning stuff. Welcome to the Langstar Archie Classic stage. Have you been up here before? Not at the stage, but at the Classic, yes. At the Classic. How many years have you been shooting? For about 36 years. And I've shot the very first Lancaster uh, Classic in the shop. All right, well, we appreciate the support over the years. Yeah. Didn't take you too long to get here, though, right? No. <laughs> no Run course. through your equipment for us. Tell uh, us what you shoot. Shooting the Hoyt Evicta 37. I uh, got the XP Achieve Sight, uh, Ultra View number three scope, uh, the AE Rest, uh, Dead Center Stabilizers, and uh, the release of the executive, the Chris Perkins executive, and then they got the Easton 2712s. All right, gotcha. Tell folks at home what that competition is like in the Masters class. It's been getting tougher it's, here the last is, few years. It is very hard, yes. <laughs> How much practicing do you do at home? Not too much. Not too much. <laughs> All right. Beating the trends there. I like that. Welcome, Todd, to the Lancaster Archie Classic stage. After our first end, Kirby with 33, Todd 29. You talk about competition, this is an amateur class, this Masters Open 50 plus category, so obviously you have to be 50 years old to the beginning of the tournament, the day the tournament starts, so you have to be 50 years old. 143 competitors came out this year to compete, and we're looking at the final four with our shooter right now, Todd McCormick, our fourth place qualifier after a single day of qualification rounds, and then this morning we had elimination rounds, single eliminations. Yeah. Okay, so Todd's found the middle. That's always a good sign after being on stage for the first time here. Yeah, and with 143 shooters, that's you know, just impressive in this class. Um, they had three elimination rounds to go through to get up here to be the top four. Yeah, they had a total of 1,056 points available. And for Kirby Gillespie, he scored 1,019 of those points. Yeah, these two are just one point different after the two days. Pretty amazing. Looking at those arrows, you can see feather fletching. Another one of feather fletching. Both of them are actually shooting feathers. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely a philosophy behind it. Obviously, you know, you're talking about making any contact, but additionally, you know, a lot of people don't understand that an arrow is just more of a steering mechanism to get the point to the target. And so the philosophy of a heavier point and lighter weight in the back, potentially. Yeah, and the feathers, they do stick up higher. They're higher profile than most plastic veins. You know, so they will get a little bit more steer out of that arrow, too. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and being yeah. that we're the, the target's only 20 yards away, you want that arrow to steer as quickly as you can possibly yeah, get right it. Right out steer. of the bow, you want it coming out straight. So for Kirby Gillespie, he's only dropped one point so far in six arrows. The archer's brain of perfection, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's always the case. If this is Vegas, you're going, all right, hit a 10, big deal. Yeah. But here at the Lancaster Archery Classic, it's like, oh. Yeah, yeah back to your comment earlier, too, you know, people using this tournament as a warm-up for Vegas. I don't think many people are using it as a warm-up. They're coming in here to win. That's a good point. You know? <laughs> uh, I want to ask you, because I, I remember you posted when you got your crystal trophy from last year. Where you got that in your house? How cool was that? It is very cool. I didn't even expect it. It showed up, and I was like, what is that? <laughs> and it was from Rob, and I was, I was very grateful. All right. Run through your equipment for us, Kirby. Let's tell Same bow as last year, TRX 38 G2. Didn't uh, change anything. Didn't change. Same air, same everything. All right. How's it feel up there? You had a year's um, worth of experience? Very comfortable. We're ready to go. I like hearing that. All right, Kirby. Congrats for making it this far. You are holding a lead, Kirby, 64 over Todd with a 60. Kirby's not afraid to uh, to load up some weight on those stabilizers, is he? No, it looks like he's got quite a bit on there. Especially on that back bar. 
perhaps one of the most customizable and individualistic sports is archery. No two setups are the same. That is. <laughs> and everybody, you know, executes a shot and shoots completely different than the next person. Good shot by McCormick. Nice solid 11. But Kirby's shooting the same exact stuff from last year. You know, he's got to have 100% confidence in it. Without question. You know, he won, yeah. won this last year, plus a few other events. Why change? Yeah, that's a good point. Plus, some people, you know, they'll set up a bow just for indoor and then just leave it. Yeah. Todd's coming back swinging here in this end. Yeah. It's interesting. You know, I shoot this category, you know, 50 plus, and there's a little bit of a performance drop off when you get into your late, late 40s, yeah, and it's normally Very like one or two points, but the possibility of just running the table with 11s in this class is so high. Yeah, like I said before, you know, anybody who makes these top four positions is definitely able to run the table. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 I think that's the first end we've seen today. Where they've both matched 33s. Yep. And that's all you can really do. I mean, unless you're calling a 12, what? is you just not give a point away. Yeah, yeah but the risk reward. Home range shop or club. The Harrisburg Archer Club. Harrisburg Archer Clubs. All right. How's the target archery community there? Very good. Very good. Very good. Lots of good shooters. Yes. All age classes represented. A lot more older shooters. The younger sh we don't have a lot of younger shooters, but we have a lot of good sh shooters, older shooters. Yes. All right. Great. Good to hear. Lots of archery. Good archery clubs out there. We are caught up. All right. Kirby Gillespie, 97. Todd McCormick, 93. Todd, you got that 12 button there. This is going to be our fourth and final end for these two guys. Nine, that could be another two points. I mean, this is the shoot up format. So we have the fourth place qualifier shooting up against the third place qualifier. The winner advances to shoot against our second place qualifier. And right now it looks like Gillespie, who was third coming in, He's comfortably in the driver's seat of this match. That one looks like it's just on the top of it. Mm -hmm. I think that'll be a long look by our scoring judge. Kirby looks super solid up there. Mm -hmm. Almost looks like he doesn't have any nerves. Huh? It's a good final arrow there for Todd. Always important for to hit that 11, especially when you know you have a couple more matches ahead of you. Yeah, and having the confidence in that match there. I mean, he's going to keep using that confidence for the next match. It's only three points dropped. Well, total possible points are 136. And that's if you call the 12 every end and hit the 12 every end. But I think you and I often look at it when you have competition like this as it's more like your 33 points per. Yeah, for sure, 33 points for, er, per end. You know, I think the 12 is just in a dire need kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Although it would be fun to see someone come in. Every end. Every Call end. Call it and hit it. It'd be even better if it was Bearbo. <laughs> <laughs> Eighth place Bearbo. 
just come in and just hit the button. Just first arrow every end. Hit the 12, set a statement coming out. Oh, man, can you imagine? Okay. This place would uh, erupt. All right, our first match, Kirby Gillespie wins. All right, so confirmation that Kirby Gillespie will win. 500 bucks for Todd McCormick in fourth place. McCormick was actually our first place qualifier before elimination rounds. But see, what's interesting right, is, is that every point matters here at the Lancaster seed. Archery Classic, but our number two seed's From coming Science, in. Here's PJ. Iowa, George Morrell. George finished fourth in qualifications, worked his way up to that number two seed. Well, George started archery like a lot of people start archery, which is bow hunting. He's been shooting for about 25 years. And uh, he was our fourth place qualifier. And after eliminations, he was able to shoot his way up to second place. And Chris, I mentioned it for a, mo a moment ago at the Lancaster Archery Classic, every point matters. And what that means is, is you know 660 points available in elimination rounds. And so every point you score matters in your qualification. But then every point also matters in elimination rounds. Isn't that right? That is correct. Um, you can come out swinging in a or a qualification round, and then once you get to the eliminations, if you drop a few, you're going to get bumped down a little bit, or you can work your way up. And you qualified in the number two spot. So, right? So I qualified sixth. Yeah. Six and after the elimination rounds, I worked my way up into second. Right, so guaranteed, guaranteed a podium spot before you even start. And that's what's really nice about the way that the point system works here at the Lancaster Archery Classic. In our shoot-up finals, in the Masters Open 50-plus yeah. category, this is an amateur class. There is a Masters Open Pro category that will be coming up tomorrow morning. Yeah. As some of you guys seen, you know, George being the number two qualifier, he got to pick what stand he wanted to be on. So he actually pushed Kirby over to the other platform. Yeah, moved him around a little bit. That's a good strategy. I mean... You know, especially as long as these guys have been playing yeah. games in their lives, why would you want to leave somebody on their spot, spot who's comfortable, who just shot only three points down? Yeah, knock them off their comfortable zone that they just shot an awesome score in. from George just at the, towards the tail end of that hold. Yeah, well, when he was drawn back, his arrow fell off the rest. So he had to let down reset, get that arrow to stay on that blade rest. 30 seconds for each archer to yeah. execute each shot. The clock starts once the arrow impacts. Another 33 for Kirby. George, welcome to the Lancaster Archery Classic stage. Thank you. Uh, have you been up here before? No. Have you been to the tournament before? Excuse yes, me. Yes, not since 2017. 2017. Yeah. All right. How's it feel coming out there, coming up here? Oh, it's it's awesome. It's a little nerve wracking, but you try to get used to it. <laughs> All right. Run through your equipment for us. Uh, shooting the Ma Matthews TRX 38, the Achieve Sight, Achieve Scope, uh, Conquest bars, um, the Fulcrum Flex, Freak Show Rest. Super and drive. some uh, Super Drive 27. 27. All right. Well, congratulations for making it this far. We're just getting started here. And we have uh, Kirby Gillespie with 33, George Morrell 32. Chris, we heard about 27s. So we're talking about the diameter of the arrow. That's the max diameter allowed in this particular competition. I'm curious to find out, have you ever been in a situation before where you've had a larger diameter or smaller diameter arrow kind of hitting better than a larger diameter arrow and you've chosen that arrow in competition even when the biggest size was available? Absolutely. Uh, last few years I felt like my 23 diameter arrows, which are the largest you can shoot in world archery, um, were shooting better than my 27s. So I stuck with my 23s throughout the whole year. Hmm. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think, uh, again, comes down to shooter preference. Yeah. Here we go. Kirby is starting to roll. You know, when you see a carbon arrow here, 
It's a uh, 27 diameter um, from George, but Kirby shooting an aluminum. That's a 27 diameter also made by the same company. So, I mean, you can customize what you want to do and what works best for you. Mm -hmm. You can see that release hand as he's pulling through his shot to get that hinge release to activate. Yeah, super relaxed on the back end there too. Mm -hmm. He's a fun one to watch, Kirby Gillespie. After that shot off camera, he turns around, looks at his coach, and just throws his hand in the air. He's into every single shot. Okay. Obviously, Morell would have really capitalized on that nine by Gillespie had he been able to hit that 11. An 11 will give Gillespie a one point advantage yeah. unofficially. But George did gain a point back there, I believe, mm -hmm. on that nine. Yep. Kirby, you had one get away from you, but you're shooting pretty clean up there, feeling comfortable. Thank you, PJ. Glad to be back. <laughs> All right, waiting for our judges to verify our scores here, but it looks like we are still, Kirby still holding a one point lead, 64 63, heading into our third end. You're, la you're laughing because of what you just saw. Tell us why. Um, you know, he's got his phone in his pocket and it's ringing. Yeah. You know, I think every archer out here probably has their phone in their pocket. Well, and you know, there's somebody who's your friend, right, who just loves to loves to get after it, is watching you live and going like, hey, I wonder if he's going to get my text message or I could call him right now, right in the middle of everything. Some family member who doesn't know you're out here shooting. Yeah. The same holes as the last arrow. Mm -hmm. Kirby taking his time. Yeah, he let 10 seconds run off the clock there before he even started a pull. Yeah. Didn't affect him at all. Worked. <laughs> you know what, though? That's also an experienced archer. Maybe he was just feeling something, wanted to take that breath, control his own pace. Yeah, and having, yeah. You know, having a shorter time clock out there, like you see him waiting here again, um, you know, it makes you make that shot faster. Mm -hmm. So when you're nervous, you know, you kind of want to hang on to it and make sure it's settled up. But with less time, you have to get it up and get it going. It's a close one. All it needs to do, that arrow, all it needs to do is at when it's at rest, is touch, ooh. He did not like that yeah, one. Yeah, that was a. That one just got away from him. And it, it looked like it fired quick for him, too, mm -hmm. before he was all the way settled. And George Morrell knows with the way that Kirby Gillespie's been shooting. But he only gets him okay. one only point there. One back. That was, that's a bit of a shock. You know, the other thing, too, is that if you're, you know, when you're in the 50 plus category, Every second of recovery can actually make a difference in the way you execute your shot. For Morrell, that shot goes off quicker, Chris, right? Goes off quicker. That means that now Kirby Gillespie has got to jump on it and he's got to get going very quickly. And you'd be surprised. I mean, not you personally, but I think a lot of people would be surprised that for people that are rhythmic shooters, when you're, you have your own pace, you're shooting by yourself in practice, that when you get into these competitions, for somebody that has a longer shot process, there's the possibility that you can force somebody into a bad shot who has that process if you're quicker on the button. Very you're quicker true. getting that arrow out. Very true. And that may have been something that Kirby was like unprepared for. I mean, that's probably 12 extra seconds, maybe, that yeah. he didn't get to recover. Yep. And maybe that's why he took the 10 seconds. Calming down those nerves, you know, how much he's been shooting, there's a lot of factors involved right. in that. All right, we agree, George. That's what you do when So, matches, I think, time. a little closer after than we thought we would be after George shot an eight. Yes. We have right now, if this was me, I would come out gunning George. at that 12. I mean, you're down by, I believe, two points. Just first, just straight away, go for first it. First arrow. Mm -hmm. Sets that, you know, you hit that, there's a lot more pressure on Kirby. 
And maybe Lancaster needs to make a uh, some type of uh, box, a practice 12 box at home that you can step on the button. Because if you find yourself on center stage, you're unfamiliar with it, how often are you actually going to think about it? Yeah, that's why, you know, that's why each one of these archers has a coach in the background so they can, you know, say, hey, you need to hit that. Mm -hmm. Three arrows per end. So we call when a group of arrows are shot. Four ends for each of these shoot-up final matches. Yeah. Look at wow. his first target there. On the All mill. inside out, big ten. If you were in this situation, would you hit the 12? 100%. Yep, there he goes, stepping on it. The 12 is called for George Morrell, especially with the way that this play scores. If he can hit this. 10 from Gillespie, and we're all tied up. Oh, oh man. It might. Seven. Nah, just below it. Just below seven. Oh, that is such a hard one. We have not seen a 12 being hit yet today. Not today. Believe that's an 11. Yeah, yeah that's solid. So that's what you do. If you're Gillespie, you put the pressure on the other shooter, Morel, to go for it. Goes for it, doesn't get it. And he can cruise home. You see that they're just off. Mm -hmm. <sighs> that's a heartbreaker of a millimeter and a half. Well, it looks like that's going to be the final that will put Morell, our second place qualifier, will move him to third, guaranteed podium. And uh, Gillespie will move to a possibility of winning it all from third place. You can see the red button. It was added last year. And of course, the great folks here at the Lancaster Archery Classic came up with the idea of putting that illuminated 12 so everybody could see. Official score, 128 to 120. George is going to finish in third place, taking home $1,000. You know, I'm looking at that 12 ring, you know, like hockey players. You know, if you're down, you got the home crowd behind you, you start a fight. <laughs> you know, get the crowd behind you. Turn the momentum. You know, that's just like the 12 ring there. That's just because you watched that game the other night and there was like four right, fights in a row. We <laughs> out our number one seed from just down the road in Lebanon, PA, we got Bob Reedinger. It looks like Bob qualified second this weekend and then worked his way up through the matches and came here in the number one seed. By one single point. 1,023 points total scored out of 1,056 1, possible. But it's not often we're talking about thousands of points. And, uh, and, and you know, George Morell had actually shot more 11, 70 versus 68 heading in here, but obviously more 10s shot. Yeah, and with these four that we've seen now, there was only a, a five point difference through the whole weekend of shooting. So Bob Reedinger versus Kirby Gillespie. Gillespie now into his third match where Reedinger lines up for his first and he will shoot first. 20 yards downrange to a 40 centimeter target face. Ten. Bob's got that uh, thousand yard stare going. It's all business. If you look at the difference here, Bob is actually shooting a two-finger release. Oh, yeah, he sure he is. He's the yeah. first one that we've seen today out here with a two-finger. Why? why? Why would someone shoot? I mean, I know we've seen four-finger, three-finger, two-finger configurations. What, what, what do you think? When I've shot two fingers in the past, I feel like my backhand relaxes more. Mm. But for me, it's harder to get that arrow to fire with only one pivoting finger. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. 
especially I would think in the wind. If you if you were shooting a tension release in the wind, you needed to get yeah. that get that thing rotated. Yeah. The longer you know, the longer the release, the more fingers you have on it, the more leverage mm -hmm. you have on it. Greg White here with Chris Schaff. We're in Masters Open 50 plus category, the 2023 Lancaster Archery Classic here in Spooky Nook Sports in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And we are watching two heavy hitters go at it for the crown of champion, the number one spot. Bob, well, welcome back to the Lancaster Archery Classic stage. Is it a new jersey from the one you got up there? or Yeah, one? that one actually had a different bow manufacturer on the back, but pretty much gotcha. the same design. How many years have you shot the Classic? Oh, uh, boy. I'm going to say probably six, seven years. I've shot it when we did it at the indoor shooting center, back at the shop, and then uh, this is my third time shooting here. Third time shooting yep, here. Yep. All right, run through your equipment for us. Tell us what you got. Uh, I'm shooting a Hoyt Invicta 40. I'm using an Excel uh, sight and scope, uh, freak show rest, uh, dead center, dead steady bars, uh, Easton 20, Super Drive 27 arrows. Uh, I'm shooting an old two finger Stan Lenhart release. And, gotcha. Uh, make my own strings. Todd Reich of Dead Center, great guy, Pennsylvania guy. We enjoy yep. his support. I'm sure he supports you as well. Yep, great guy. Couldn't ask for anybody better. All right, welcome back to the Lancaster Archery Classic stage. After our first end, Bob Reedinger, 32, Kirby Gillespie, 31. <coughs> and just above the targets, 20 yards down range. We have banners hanging up from 1920 and 22. Of course, we had to miss 2021. And Reedinger's face is hanging up there, just off to the left behind our scoring graphic as the 2019 Classic Champion. 10. The judges will definitely have yeah, a look at that one. I was going to say, that's going to be a bit of a tight call. We know with the 27 diameter arrow on those target faces, if you're on the inside of that 10 line, it's cut. Yes. But there is a little bit of play there once you get that line. Yeah. The cool thing about these two guys is they've both won this tournament before. Mm -hmm. you know, um, Bob won it in 19, and Kirby won it in 22. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they've been there before. That's right. So we'll definitely have a repeat champion. Eleven. It's kind of have that feeling. This might come down to Ten. our first shoot off of the day. We all love shoot-offs. We certainly do, unless you're in it, right, yeah, Chris? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> unless you're in it. Ten. Wow. We're going pretty much arrow for arrow on this one. <laughs> it's those moments, too, Chris, when you know you have an opportunity. Like, about it's it's not just the pressure of having the elevated platform and all these people around but also what's different is and you've dealt with this in world archery plenty of times you're hearing it you're hearing the scores over the pa like there's no way to block it out is there no there's you just have to focus on yourself i mean try to block everything else out as much as possible yeah but it also has to be when you're looking at your own strategy and you're like okay okay they just told me he shot a 10. You have a TV screen in front of you, you can see. You have a, your own monitor where you're looking. You can see right in front of the archers. That is their target. So that's why I think you, you don't see a lot of binoculars coming out. As Just as I say that, as Gillespie takes a look, I think he's just kind of... He's doing it because he heard you. Yeah, thanks, Kirby. Appreciate it. But it is kind of weird to get used to it because I don't have that at home. I, I can't just look down on the ground and see a nice camera that's focused on there. Yeah, a lot of times when they do have the camera there and they have the big screen up there, I very rarely take my binoculars out there with me. Yeah, I would imagine so. Continue with the Masters Open 50-plus category. 
Eleven. Good first arrow there. One thing I can say about the shot process of, of Kirby Gillespie is he knows himself. He knows that once that clock goes off, that he needs that moment to just take a breath. Yeah, he's not forcing anything. Now the door's open. That nine just opened everything up for reading her. Yeah. He capitalizes yeah. on it. Couldn't come back. Yep. You also notice Gillespie chewing the gum. <laughs> I mean, it is a way to relax sometimes for people just to kind of get that energy out. A little more movement. Yeah, 33. Nice shoot. When you're in a match situation like this, Chris, first arrow or last arrow, what tends to be more tense for you, more adrenaline ripping through your veins? Last. Eleven. For sure. Um, you know, I feel like the Vegas shoot, completely different scoring than here. But I feel like the first day is definitely the hardest for me. Because um, I don't want to screw it up that early in the weekend. Yeah. You know, but here, it's definitely the last arrow. Especially if you know you have to hit it. Bob, knowing the local community here, what clubs or shop do you shoot out of up there in Lebanon? Uh, the, the club I shoot out of is Palmyra Sportsman's okay. Association. Great club. Uh, the uh, shop that I shoot for is Bigger's Archery in Halifax. It's just a, a local shop that my dad had me going to since the late 70s, and he's right. just kept going back. So. Palmyra is a great club. Yeah, I just, with just moving to Lebanon, I joined their club, and yeah. Short Mountain Conservation Club is actually my home club from, as a, you know, as a kid growing up, being a member, right. a lifetime member and everything, so, but... Any local club is, no matter where they are, it's a great organization to be in. So. Palmyra's into everything, actually produced an Olympic gold medalist out of there in air rifle several years ago. Boy, PJ knows his local history, doesn't he? Yes, he does, and it's awesome to see a club, you know, still around from the 70s. And Bob Reedinger, by the way, he got into archery just because he wanted to be with his dad and his uncles. You know, wanted to hang around him and look at him now. Up on the big stage. Yeah. A reigning champion, former champion going at it. One trying to double his performance from last year. And Kirby Gillespie, who won this 2022. And Bob Reedinger trying to snatch that title back from 2019. Ten. Uh-oh. Close to that clock. No, he was running it down. But yeah. this is the last end. He just gained one point back, one point match, with two arrows to go. Ten That's in that same hole that he had that arrow called out of earlier. Yeah. So right now, Kirby can capitalize, I think, again. But again, how do you mentally stay focused on just shooting the middle? He'll want that one back. Turn around right as soon as he shot it to his coach. Yeah. Okay, he's got to hit that 12 button here. Nope. Yeah. Unofficially. It looks like Bob is going to be the 2023 Lancaster Archery Champion. Absolutely. I still would have hit the button. Me too. Would have hit the button. <laughs> Me too. So we'll obviously wait for official confirmation, but I would say the majority of the people sitting in this room watching, for our watching here. what's going on, the majority of them are shooters, and definitely everyone has, sit, has sat and watched archery tournaments before. Yes, they have. Parents, you know, and that don't shoot so maybe with their kids. But. There, by, by 
As this broadcast, of course, supported by Conquest and Black Eagle. With our scoring, brought to you by Dead Center Archery Products. And it is and official. Bob official. One There's a one, one point difference there in that match. Do you think he's going to look back at this and say, man, I should have hit that 12? Yeah, probably could have. But there'll be two nines, I think, for Gillespie that'll haunt him in that one. As our champion, Bob Reedinger, first place, $3,000, 2023 Lancaster Archery Classic. How's that feel, Bob? Feels great. I owed him from Outdoor Nationals. He had me by one hour at Outdoor Nationals last year in Mechanic. Traded it back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bob, what's it take to get to this stage and to be the champion? Tell us a little bit about what you do in archery, how you shoot. <laughs> Believe it or not, uh, I, I just picked this bow up in January, the beginning of January, if, actually the week between Christmas and New Year's. Uh, my dad was diagnosed with cancer early on, and I wasn't going to shoot after Outdoor Nationals. And if I hadn't been off work probably the week between Christmas and New Year's, I probably wouldn't be standing here right now. I wasn't going to shoot. And I just said to my buddy, I said, maybe I'll go shoot my bow. And next thing you know, it, it's just, it, the, it's just like riding a bike. I mean, uh -huh. it's always there. And I thought, I know I could get through qualification. I said, where I end up after that, I'll be content. And Work if you would ask me good. a month ago, I'd be standing here in first place. I would have, I would have laughed at you. But well, we're certainly glad you came out. It sounded lot, like yep. it worked out for you. Just lots, years of practice, you know, just getting that mental game behind you and, yeah. and trusting your shot. All right, 2023 Classic Masters Open champion. Congratulations, Bob. Thank you. You know what, Chris? It really doesn't matter what age you're at. When you have a rival and someone that you like to shoot with, shoot against, and someone you go, oh, yeah, get a little bit of motivation, it's always nice to see that. Yeah, and you just heard him say that he got him by one point at Outdoor Nationals. So now they're swapping spots. Now they're a revenge tour. So great result. The Lancaster Archery Classic, the 2023 version for Masters Open 50 plus category. Still more action coming your way from the Spooky Nook Sports Complex here in Mannheim, Pennsylvania.